Okay, so in Come For You Why, we can now train our own LoRas. So this video is about the train LoRa node that we now get in Come For You Why. Now, LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaptation. It's a way of guiding the generation of images to try and create consistency. And it's just one way to do it. Now, I have been playing around with this for a few days, and I'm getting some kind of what I consider mediocre results. But since there isn't a lot of documentation on this particular node, I'm going to show you what I'm doing anyway. And if you're really knowledgeable about LoRa's, you might be able to tell me in the comments what I could have done better. But anyway, since there isn't much information about using this particular the note on the internet yet. I'm going to show you what I've discovered. All right, so train Laura. Model, checkpoint loader. I'm going to use Excel base. I've tried different Excel models and I find the output is very much the same. So I'm just going to go for just the SDXL base here. Now I did try to use Flux, but the Flux models I have are FP8 down here, Flux Dev, FP8 and Schnell. And the training type down here, BF16 and 32, I think it's these things. They conflict with the Flux checkpoint and it generates an error. So I tend to just use an SDXL model and leave these training data type and LoRa data type here as the default BF16. Okay, let's just continue on connecting these. So clip, clip text and code. Just move that to the side. In here, this is where we write the name of our LoRa. I'm going to use something quite simple, SB code hyphen LoRa hyphen test. So when I use this LoRa later to generate images, that's how I'll reference it. Okay, and that conditioning then goes to the positive. Okay, the VAE, the VAE encode, and then this latent goes up to latents, like so. Okay, these pixels here, drag that out. There's a new node, load images or image data set from folder. Okay, there are some pre-built folders, and I've already created one called SB Code Laura Test, which contains some images. The folders that it shows in this drop-down are under the input folder where you've got Comfy UI. These folders here, 3D Clip Space Pasted and one called SB Code Laura Test, which I created earlier. Okay, just to show that drop-down. So with your images, create a folder in here, call it anything you like. I've called mine SB Code LoRa Test, and I've pre-generated some images that I'm going to use to train the LoRa. At the end of the video, I'll talk about how I actually created these photos. Anyway, continuing, if you have a set of photos that you want to use to train your LoRa, make them all consistent in some way. There are different features about these photos. For example, these are full body poses. These ones here, one, two, three, or four, five mid body poses that one sort of in between and that's a close up there so this is enough for me to show you how to train a LoRa using comfy ui anyway so just to summarize that i have my own folder called sb code LoRa test under the comfy ui input and i have some images which seem to be quite consistent i've also tried photos of myself but i find images that are generated actually from using ai still give a better result so at the end of the video i'll tell you how i created these photos anyway if i use this drop down now load image data set from folder that's my folder sb code laura test so all of those images in that folder will be loaded into the process via this node here i'll also preview that preview image so that we can see what was loaded in okay so i'm going to call it sb code laura test now over here laura save laura node okay here it's called save laura waits steps into steps now that's the file it's going to save under laura's comfy ui trained laura's i'm going to call it the same thing sb code laura test okay so very good this next one loss a loss graph node now this will draw a graph of the progress of the generation i don't really know what this graph is telling me so if you know what it is please leave a comment for other people and myself and tell me what I'm supposed to be aiming for because it seems to be quite random, the information I get from that. But anyway, in this first step, I'm going to get those 10 images and I'm going to do one step per image. So that's 10. For the rank, I'm going to leave that as rank 8. And when it generates the LoRa file, in the file name, it'll leave how many steps were used, but the file name won't indicate what the rank is. So I'm just going to update this and I'll make it also include 
the number for the rank. So Laura test eight. So I'm going to create several here. I'm going to do that again. Press eight. OK. OK, so all my generations that will use rank eight, I'll put into that SP code Laura test eight. So this is what I'll do. I'll pause the recording of this video because it's going to take me quite a few hours. So rank eight, 10 steps, one with 320 steps. That will be 32 steps per image and one with 64 steps per image. So 640. And then I'll also generate some with rank 16. So 10 steps, 320 and 640. And I'll put those in a file called Laura test 16. OK, so I'm going to pause the recording of this generate those and I'll be back in one second okay so I've generated the six different Laura's okay so I use different steps 10 320 and 640 and different ranks 8 and 16 each time it produces this plot loss graph I don't really know what I'm looking at there so if you know what that is saying or what it is that I'm supposed to be aiming for leave a comment anyway so these are my timings these first two here are much slower. I had other programs running on my computer. That's why the numbers seem quite strange. Another one, rank 8, 320, one hour, four seconds versus rank 16, 320, 14 minutes. Then rank 8, 640, 17 minutes, rank 16, 640, 30 minutes. So those two results should have been much lower. But since I had some programs on my computer that were also using the GPU, that was the reason why those numbers are strangely higher than they should have been. And my graphics card is an RTX 4060 Ti. And like I said, I produced six different LoRa's with different settings, and that's them there. Test 8, 10 steps. Test 8, 320. Test 8, 640. Test 16, that's rank 16, with 10 steps. Test 16, 320. 16, 640. And the file sizes. So the rank 8s, are that file size the rank 16s with that file size and these are my training images which were all quite good i didn't use a laura to generate these but i'll talk about how i generated those in a moment and also these images are all 1024 by 1024 okay anyway let's test out these lauras so we only need a default workflow so browse templates just the default image generation Okay, now for the checkpoint, I'm going to use something else. Like I said, when I'm generating the LoRa, I will use SDXL base, but I find when using the LoRa, I will get different quality results using different checkpoints. So I'm going to use another SDXL checkpoint, that's Realism Engine SDXL, which I find gives me good results often. We need to load the LoRa now, so I'm going to drag that sideways. Model LoRa Loader. Okay, so, and then bring that model down to there so we're now intercepting the model line with this LoRa loader because I've generated several LoRa's I'm not really seeing all of them there just yet because I haven't done edit refresh node definitions okay now there are all the LoRa's that I just generated and we saw those file names there those files are in comfy UI output LoRa's so if you know comfy UI well all the things you generate go into the output folder the output folder also contains a LoRa's folder and that's where they were all put when I used this train LoRa workflow this other LoRa here that shows up the realistic LoRa that's one I downloaded from Civit AI and that you normally put into your comfy UI models LoRa's so you can put your LoRa's into that folder or leave them in the output folder. There we go. Output LoRa's. So let's try one out. My prompt or my LoRa keyword there is that. So let's just try that out by itself. I'm just going to reorder this slightly so that we can see it better. Okay, so I'm using a Realism Engine. It's an SDXL based. You could use any other SDXL engines, even SDXL base itself. Okay, so we're using the LoRa. The first one I'm going to use is Test 8 with 10 steps. That is the first one I generated there. So Rank 8, 10 steps. Okay, and that is the keyword to use that LoRa. So run. Okay, I didn't move the clip, so we also have to intercept the clip there. Clip, clip and clip okay that's better okay so just to help you understand that more clip is also being intercepted and that's the positive and that's the negative prompt let's try that again run okay that's working generating okay so that's nothing like the laura that i just selected there let's try another one well actually i'm going to set that to fixed for now and just try any old number run that 
No, nope, still nothing. Let's see what happens if I use the rank 16 with 10 steps. Okay, run. Oh, still nothing. Okay, let's try rank 8 with 320 steps. SB code Laura test, run. Okay, now we're getting something similar. Okay, so it's not very good, but it looks a little bit like my training data. So the blue jeans, the v-neck top and glasses, but it's still nowhere near as good as the training data that I created using a different technique. Right, let's try a different one. Rank 16 with 320 steps. Run that. Right, okay, so I'm using a fixed seed, and this is what we're getting. So still not perfect, I mean, but the definition is much better. Still not as good as my training data. Let's try a different one. Test 8 with 640 steps, just using just that as the positive prompt. All right, so we can see that the law is having some effect. Let's try the rank. 16, 640 steps, run that. Okay, so we can see. So perhaps a high number of steps or a higher rank will improve on that. I'm not really sure yet. I know that when I've tested other LoRa's, I still don't get the kind of results I'm hoping for. But anyway, let's do some more tests to see how good these LoRa's are. Let's go back to, actually just gonna move that over near the image so that we can see a little easier what I'm actually selecting. Okay, let's go back to the first one then. Again, 810, and the prompt is gonna be SB code Laura test. That's the name of my Laura. Riding a golf buggy, golf buggy. Okay, so we're trying to make our little character do something, riding a golf buggy. 810 steps, run. No, didn't really look like my character at all. Let's try eight 320 steps. Okay, still doesn't really look like my character, but there is a V-neck and sunglasses. Let's try eight with 640 steps. No, not good. Let's try rank 16 with 10 steps. Nope, rank 16 with 320 steps. No, and rank 16 with 640 steps. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, and she's riding a buggy. And it does look a little bit like my training data. There. So it does look like, perhaps if I use 1,280 steps, it might be even better, but you would see that it would take even longer to generate, and maybe even a rank 32. I'm not really sure yet. Let's try a different prompt. Drinking. A cup of coffee. Okay, so the first one, 8, 10, right? Well, we get the coffee, 8, 320. Okay, this one looks kind of close. We can see some influence there, 8, 640. Okay, let's try 16, 10. Uh, same thing. 320, okay, and 640. I guess the word coffee is deciding the color there, but anyway, so 16, 640, we're getting quite close with that. And that's my training data. Okay, I think that's enough tests. I will assemble all those into a single image so you can view them all. But as you can see, Laura does take a little bit of work to get to work right. Okay, so now onto these images, how I generated these. I didn't use Laura to generate those. I used the IP adapter and the Flux Schnell. And I have a lesson that shows how to use Flux Schnell, the IP adapter, and also OpenPose. These are combinations of IP adapter with OpenPose and a prompt, or IP adapter and just a prompt. And I produced quite consistent results. Read the description for a link where you can find out more about how I use the IP adapter here. So anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you want to support me, then consider becoming a member of my channel where you'll get access to more of my Comfy UI videos. Excellent.